or break into a flat to shoot armed gangsters to rescue a hostage in short order. All right, y'all, welcome back to Combat Arms Channel. Okay, so today we're checking out something out of China. More specifically, we're checking out a Hong Kong police unit. So this is the Flying Tigers. I guess this is like some 40th anniversary sort of event that they did. So this is also called the Special Duties Police, which I get it. I guess it's like their like premier tactical police unit in Hong Kong. So we've checked out a lot of different police units, nothing really from Hong Kong or China at all. So it'd be kind of cool to see how the police units stack up with other ones that we've checked out. So again, it'll be different just based off of like legislation, what kind of gear they have access to, and also what kind of crime they have. So this should be a good one. Again, it's about three minutes long. So let's check it out. Okay, some live fire. Looks like a, an urban assault. This is a pretty cool intro so far. Some dope fast roping. You guys already know I love fast roping. Some MP5, some nice kits. Ah, oh, yes, they're repelling. Yeah, that's quick. Each special duties unit member has undergone a rigorous screening process right. and tough training. Stand by, go! The unit is on standby Flash 24 bang, hours, nice. seven days a week on the highest. Okay, so you guys know I love checking out the gear and I really love this so far. So we're seeing, oh, actually this is kind of interesting. It looks like they have MP5s with no stock. I can't really see. Yeah, it looks like they don't have stocks. That's kind of odd. I know there is a technique to like push out the MP5 and sort of use the tension of the sling to make it a little more steady. But let's check it out. So we have some pretty standard helmets, pretty nice holsters. They kind of look like Safari Lands. And then it also looks like they have flight suits, which are pretty nice. And pretty normal body armor. I'm not a huge fan of the green on black combination, to be honest. And these knee pads are kind of just the worst thing. Even in CQB, I probably wouldn't use them that much. If I do, I'll probably just have one on the knee that I typically take a knee on. So. Okay. Highest alert to cope with any dangerous mission that may suddenly crop Oh up. yeah, they do have stocks. They're just collapsed. The special huh. duties unit is also known as the Flying Tigers. Its logo is a tiger with a pair of wings, an emblem of courage. Makes sense. The unit was established in 1974 to target international terrorism. Hmm. The unit's main duties are to counter terrorist attacks, rescue yep. hostages, and tackle serious crimes involving firearms. Ooh, interesting, Gillies. I gotta say, shooting balloons looks cool, but it's really not that satisfying. Unless you're doing like some really cool like shoot house stuff where you're trying to like see the effects immediately, then it's kind of satisfying, but like long range stuff like that, it's not gonna be that fun. There's an annual selection of SDU recruits. An 11 day selection period, popularly nice. known as Hell Week, is incredibly demanding. Good old Only Hell 25 Week. 25 percent of applicants succeed and they undergo a further nine month training period to upgrade their abilities in shooting, tactics, and physical endurance. Okay. Yeah, so again, a selection process is what you kind of see with, with units like this. And it makes a lot of sense. If you have a selection process, the quality at the end or the, the outcome after the fact is much better off than what you'd see without a selection process. Again, if you have like a really brutal selection, you can see who's really about it, who actually has like the mental fortitude to get through some hard stuff, to handle like physical fitness and handle stuff that's strenuous on the body at the same time, stuff that's really hard mentally. So this is kind of cool. Again, it's nice to see a selection process. You don't normally see that with like certain police units, but with these special counter-terror police units, it's pretty common. So. They're doing some marksmanship stuff and it looks pretty standard, but they're also doing like some, they're like sidestepping and then shooting again. So it's kind of interesting. Oh, the MP5 is so dope. Nice grouping though. In the end, a trained sniper will be able to shoot a target as small as a fist from a distance of 100 meters. That's really not that impressive to be honest. I think every, anyone should be able to do that to with pretty much any rifle caliber rifle. I mean, maybe if it's a nine millimeter, it might be a little bit harder, but even so, 100 meters is not nearly as far as a lot of people would think. And, you know, I have some pretty big fists, so this is a pretty big target. So at 100 meters, you should be able to get groupings that are like this small, even with a standard rifle. But, hey, good on them. 
or break into a flat to shoot armed gangsters to rescue a hostage in short yeah. order. This is cool though. Gangsters. An SDU member's basic gear weighs 18 to 22 kilograms. They okay. carry an MP5 submachine gun, mm -hmm. Glock 17 semi-automatic pistol, ballistic vest, ballistic headgear, fire-resistant head cover, and a gas mask. Yep. Okay. High-performance sniffer dogs assist SDU members <laughs> in their duties. <laughs> sniffer dogs. Cute this dog. This year marks the Special Duties Unit's 40th anniversary. Over those four oh. decades, more than 380 members have served in... Wait, what the heck? He's like doing proper rock climbing. I've not seen any sort of tactical unit like try and do rock climbing with kit on. That is interesting. We see plenty of people do rappelling and abseiling and whatnot, but not rock climbing, so that's More different. than 100 are currently serving now. That's not a lot. To date, the unit has participated in 162 missions and conducted 335 dive searches. Wow, okay. Pretty good track record then. I'm probably not gonna be familiar with any of these incidents, to be honest. Well, they have the experience and that definitely helps with like developing tactics. Again, you'll see this a lot with these special police units. They have the experience, they know what they need, so they're gonna sort of develop the gear around that. Again, depending on you know how often you expect this stuff to happen, and especially in Hong Kong, I would imagine there's not a whole lot of like terrorist attacks or even like violent attacks with guns and whatnot, because there's probably not a lot of access to them there. I'm not really too sure to be honest, but I'd imagine it's a little bit easier. So these guys don't need to be as well equipped as you know some SWAT people that you'd probably see in the U.S. looking like straight up military or like SF operators. But again, the gun threat here is a lot more, so you can expect that to be different. And the funding is probably going to be a lot better for you know police units in the U.S. just because, again, of all the, all the crazy stuff going on. So it is kind of cool. You can sort of see the difference in, I mean, the demographics of the country and I guess like the, the crime rates and what sort of crimes you see. You will see the difference there in these sort of police units and also what they have seen in the past. Because a lot of these units, again, are built out of necessity, usually based off of a specific event, and they sort of just immediately get tailored around that event and they'll sort of advance from there. But yeah, it looks like some pretty cool stuff. I mean, I'd like to do training with them regardless. I like doing training with anyone that's doing sort of CQB or repelling stuff. It's just a lot of fun. And we can see they had fast roping too. So they have some pretty good capabilities, not gonna lie. The gear was was pretty like standard, but their capabilities were pretty on point. But let me know what you guys think about this video. Of course, you can put all your comments down below and I appreciate it. So if you guys have anything else to recommend, you can throw it down below as well. But this was a recommendation from y'all. And again, I didn't check out anything from China or Hong Kong, so I figured I might as well you know, check out something. And this is a pretty cool unit, not gonna lie. Again, these short videos are nice because I can actually react to these short things that you guys send me. So I do appreciate it. Keep sending some awesome short videos or even like other longer videos my way so I can keep reacting to them. I do appreciate it. Thank you guys for liking and subscribing and all that good stuff. But I will see y'all in the next video. Thank you.